Hey everyone, Matt Brunig here. I was having a conversation today about public production, and in that conversation I threw out this statistic. In the United States, the government runs 100,000 different K-12 schools, and those schools educate 50 million kids every single day. And, you know, I'd like to throw this out here just to kind of show the, the sheer scale of, of production uh, that, that the government does engage in and, and engage in, you know, quite successfully. Um, I mean, this is a monumental undertaking that's done every single day. The number of customers or students is immense, 50 million daily. The number of buildings, 100,000 buildings is immense. You know, and while obviously no production on that scale is going to be perfect at every single node <laughs> in the production uh, uh, process, overall it's it's pretty pretty dang impressive. And one of the people I was talking to uh, came back with uh, a couple of points that are I think very much conventional wisdom among the general public, but also uh, very much untrue. So those points were. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little ill right now. Those points were, number one, um, public schools actually don't educate kids very well. The private schools do a lot better. And then number two, uh, rich parents all send their kids to private schools. Those things are not true. And so I thought I would do a video here, um, both because I would like to debunk that, um, but also because uh, it'll give me an opportunity to do some like data tutorial stuff um, because as part of debunking it, I had to run a new uh, stat that I'd never run before. And so I thought, well, let's keep track of how I'm doing that and then I can do like a little video on it and it'll be fun. So, so let's hop in to that. For starters, on the question, are prov private schools better than public schools? Let's look at this study from 2018. They uh, track, this is a longitudinal study, which means they track kids from kindergarten to ninth grade. So every year you're, you're checking in on the same 1,000 kids. And so you can kind of see how they progress and see how things go. Um, and what they show here is that uh, in unadjusted models, meaning you're just comparing raw, you know, you take the kids in the private schools, you take the kids in the public schools, and you look at their educational achievement. In the unadjusted models, children with a history of enrollment in private schools perform better on nearly all outcomes assessed in adolescence. However, by simply, whoa, oh my gosh, by simply controlling for the socio-demographic characteristics that selected children and families into these schools, all of the advantages of private school education were eliminated. So, you <laughs> even have this chair on top. There's no evidence to suggest that low-income children or children enrolled in urban schools benefited more from private school enrollment. So, you can go through this study. It's fun. If anything else, just the literature review is fun because they just show study after study after study where people are trying to prove that, like, vouchers are effective or not effective. And, you know, generally they don't find them to be very effective. Charter schools, on average, no more effective than traditional public schools. They go through all that, which is fun if you want to read all that. But broadly speaking, right, the point here is that you can't just say... Let's get all the private school kids in one bucket and all the public school kids in another bucket and say who has the higher test scores or who has the higher, you know, admissions to which college or who has whatever, right? You have to control because the private school kids and the public school kids are not identical to one another, all right? And one of the ways in which they obviously vary is that the uh, private schools, because they charge a fee, you're going to have you know, on, they're going to screen out lower income people. There are other ways in which they vary as well. Private schools can be selective, right? So if your kid is not, uh, you know, up to snuff, they just won't enroll them, right? And that pushes them into the public school. And the, so now the public school has a kid who's, you know, maybe just not as academically talented um, that, that wanted to go to a private school but just couldn't even get into one, right? So you have all these effects that kind of um, alter the composition of the student bodies that don't actually tell us how good are the schools at instruction, at education, right? If you compare apples to apples, right, same kids in the same schools, who, which of them is educating them the best? And the answer is that it's the same. There's no difference at all. So 
if you're impressed with private school outcomes, then you should also be impressed with public school outcomes. Um, again, like I said, the same with charters and whatever. Like overall, these schools are fairly similar once you control for demographic characteristics. Right. So that's just on school performance. But I wanted to, with the data part of this, cover the question of who actually goes to private schools, you know, as a general matter. Um, or I guess to say more specifically, how much more? We know, I mean, it's true, of course, that richer kids are more likely to go to private school than public schools. But how much more likely? And is it the case that, you know, when you get up to the top 10% or 5%, what you'll find is like 90% of those kids are in private schools? Is that what we're going to find? Or are we going to find that even at the top, top, top level of the income distribution, um, it's still the case that most of these rich kids are going to public schools? Let's, let's find out. So in order to uh, get data on this, what I do is I go to ipums.org. Specifically, I go to the um, USA <laughs> version of it. So you can also do IPUMS CPS. And they have a number of uh, different things they do, but IPUMS USA. And we're just trying to get a few variables together here, right? So first thing is, oh, I guess let's start with the samples. So if you go to IPUMS USA, you have a number of options here, right? You can go all the way to 1850 and get like the census going all the way back there. Um, or you can uh, get some of these more recents. From, from 2000 on, they have the ACS, which is the American Community Survey, is a 1% sample of the population that the census does every year. You can get ACS three-year files for a few years. Um, so it's like all three of the prior years put together, five-year files, whatever. Anyways, what I want to do is unselect all the default samples. And I want to pick the one-year ACS file for 2019. And the reason I'm picking 2019 is because that's pre-COVID, right? So that's going to get us what we want in like a normal year, OK? So we select that. Boom. All right, so now we see right here. We've got that. That's our sample. And so now we need some variables. So <clears throat> what we want is education, right? Um, here, let me increase the, right? And now what we want, let's get some size on this so you can read it. All right, so we're trying to get education. Um, I think we need two variables here, right? The first is grade level attending. So let's actually click through to grade level attending. I'll open it in a new tab and just see what it says. Grade level attending reports the greater level of grade or level of recent schooling for people who attended regular school or college at the time of the interval. All right, and then what are the code options? All right, so for this variable, these are the options. If the variable has a number of one, right, for a given kid, so like you'll have a kid, he'll be represented in the file, and then there'll be a number for this variable, grade attend. And if that number is one, then that means the kid attends pre-K. If the number is two, then the kid attends kindergarten. If the number is three, then they're attending grade one through four, and so on and so forth, right? So that's what we want, because what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna be, we wanna be able to isolate these kids, right? And just analyze. What are these kids who are in kindergarten through 12th grade? We only wanna focus on those kids, and then we wanna ask ourselves, you know, what school do they go to? So I'm gonna add to cart, you see here? Add to cart. All right, I got a variable in there. It says I have two variables in there. That's, I don't know what that's about. We'll figure that out. All right. The other thing we want, uh, look, school type, public or private school. Let's click on through to that. School type indicates whether respondents are attending, who were attending school were enrolled in a public or private school. So we go to the codes. Here we go. If they have a two, they're in public school. If they have a three, they're in private school. Now, it looks like in 1980 and 1970, you could even indicate church-related or parochial. But we're just doing 2019, which means we're doing the ACS. So we're really only going to have these two options. So let's put that in the cart. Excellent. OK, what else are we doing? Um, let's go back. OK, so we have grade level attending. That's going to allow us to isolate K through 12 students. And we've got what school type they're in. And so what we also need now is income. 
And you got a number of options here. What we're going to use is the total family income, right? It is what it sounds like. I won't run you through that. You can go and click through if you want to read the description. The other thing we're going to need here is the family size. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to take the family income, which is all the income of everyone in a related family. So you go into a household, you get all the people in that household who are related to one another. You add up all the income of everyone who's in that family unit, right? And that gives you the family's total income. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by the family size. So if there's four people in the family, we'll take the total income of everyone in the family and we'll divide it by four. That way we can kind of get an adjusted income amount that's, you know, equivalized to the family size. So in order to do that, I need the family size. Um, okay, I think that's all we need. Yes, okay, so when you click, uh, you know, check out, basically, in your data cart, you'll get this. And it's got um, these variables that we selected, right? Remember, we selected the family size, the grade attending, the school type, and the total family income. We've got those four. And then it gives you a bunch of these pre-selected variables. I don't need any of these pre-selected variables except person weight. The person weight's going to tell you how much that person represents, how many people they represent, right? So a given uh, person they interview, they'll say that person is equal to like 1,100 people, <laughs> right? And they use that weighting to try to get you a nice representative sample. So we're going to keep the person weight in. Everything else I don't need. Now you can keep it in. It doesn't matter if you take it out. But if you take it out, uh, the file size is smaller and it like they prepare the file faster. So that's good. So then I'll go to create data extract. I can name the extract private or public, doesn't matter. And then we would submit the extract. Then you'll see, they'll say, ah, oh, we're processing it. We'll email you when it's ready. Um, I've already done this ahead of time because I didn't want to have to wait for the video. But you'll download the file like this, and it'll go to your computer, right? And then the data file will be what you run the numbers on. Now, the other thing that's key about this is that um, it comes with a code book. So we'll click here for the code book. And we'll come back to this code book, but uh, just just know that's, that's what the code book looks like. Um, so let's see what we have here. Um, here is my, I use Visual Studio. Um, you know, I used to use Vim. <laughs> I have the Vim key binding. Someone mentioned that um, in one of the other videos. I do have the Vim key bindings on it, but I use um, Visual Studio. I guess I should uh, zoom, right? I need to, uh, is there a way to, there we go. All right, because we want a little size so you can maybe read a little bit of it. Okay. Oh, boy, what's going on here? Oh, the terminal is, is acting crazy. Clear. Oh, no. What if I just kind of... There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. So the file that we downloaded is right here. USA 41. That's just because it's the 41... 41st time I've done this. I've downloaded a file. Um, and we can actually open up this file. And what you'll see, I'm just opening it up in a text editor, weirdly, in the terminal here. You'll see it's just a line. It's just a list of lines. There's 323... Uh, no, no, there's 3.2 million lines in the file. We can actually do this in the terminal here. Oh, Lord. What's going on? <laughs> oh, my return button's stuck. Okay. All right. So we got this many lines in the file. That's 3.2 million lines. Every line is a person, right, that they interviewed. It's a 1% sample of the population. We have roughly 323 million uh, people in the U.S., at least in 2019. So a 1% sample of the population should have 3.2 million people in it. So good. Um, we can open this up. And now you'll see each line is just this set of numbers. That's it. 
that's all we got here. Um, and so the numbers correspond to this data dictionary here, okay? So hold with me here. Let's start actually coding a little bit, just the kind of preliminary. I dumped the preliminary stuff in there already. Um, here I just import some Python modules, including my own uh, personal library <laughs> that I use for some of these calculations. Um, and this just opens the file. It reads it into a, um, an array called data. And every line is just the, an element in the array. Or I guess they call it a list in Python. And then it closes the file. OK. So from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty array. Whoops like this. And this array I'm going to fill up with relevant data and then do some calculations on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop to remember this thing right here data is its own is a list of every line in the file. So remember the lines look like this. Here's the first 5 lines of the file. They look like this. So there's a list and this is list item 0. This whole line is list item 0. Then this whole line is list item 1. And then this whole I line is list item 2, list item 3, list item 4, all the way down to 320 or 3.2 million, right? So the, it's a list with 3.2 million items in it. And each item is just all the characters on each line in the file, OK? So what I want to do is I want to go through each of those lines one by one. Someone described this as raw dogging Python, uh, you know, because I don't use pandas for this kind of stuff. I know how to use pandas. I do use it sometimes depending on how I'm feeling. But I like this. It's more intuitive. And I think it's especially good if you're trying to educate people on how this works because it's not just like learn some panda tricks, uh, pandas tricks. Pandas is a Python library. Um, it's like understand what you're doing with the data, hopefully. Anyways. So we're going to go through each line. And then I'm going to need to chop the line up into different uh, bits of information. So the first bit of information we want here is person weight. And like I said before, that is the weight of that person in the file. That's how many people they represent in the population. And so what this is telling us here, where it says columns 1 through 10, what it's telling us is that the first 10 numbers on each line are the person weight. So we'll just chop those first 10 numbers, and we'll make that the person weight. And we'll do that for each line. So what are the first 10 numbers? So you can count them here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's highlight those. Now, it's got all these leading zeros. But what that means is that the first person in this file, his person weight is 1,100. That's how many people he represents in the population for the purpose of this survey. And then we can go down to the next guy, and he represents 7,000 people in the population. The next guy represents 2,000 people in the population, and so on and so forth, right? And we want to, what we're going to do when we do the calculations, we have to make sure that we keep account of this, you know, that we, we make sure everything is weighted properly. So I'm just going to say weight equals int line 0 to 10, right? So the first 10 characters of the line, we're going to make an integer out of it, and that's just going to be the weight for that line. Now we're going to do the next thing, fam size. Fam size are co is columns 11 and, and 12, right? So it's going to be this, um, this column here. Um, 11 to 12. You see, is that 0, 1? So that means that this person lives in a one-person family. This person lives in a one-person family. It looks like the first five people all list, live in one-person families. Um, but if we go down further, we should see, I would think, some, <laughs> some, some families that aren't one-person families. Um, let's see. So 1,600. Maybe they do a bunch of one-person families. Um, am I missing something? Um, well, let's do it on here. Let's do it on here and see what it looks like, OK? 
So first off, okay, so fam size equals int line, and then we're going to say from 10 to 12. And let's see, what is what are the fam sizes that we have here? Um, and we can print all the fam sizes here by running the script. There we go. There we go. See, see, we got a bunch of different fam sizes <laughs> in there. Two-person family, two-person family. And you'll notice three-person family, three-person family, three-person family, because these are the three people in the family. One-person family, one-person family, five, 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 five. So we got a bunch of different family sizes. I don't know what I was doing there before, but it works. All right, so we got fam size in there. Let's go on to grade attended, right? Grade attended right here is column 13. So let's say, I'm just going to put grade equals int line. And I'm trying to get the 13th character. So I'm going to start with 12 and then go 12 to 13. We also need school type. So school type equals int line. And then what are we doing on school type? School type is 16. That's the 16th character. So to capture the 16th character, in the line, we're going to do 15 to 16, and then we got family income, and to capture that, that goes from from 17 to 23, so we're just going to do 16 to 23. Um, and the reason all these initial numbers are one ahead, right, so the first thing goes from 1 to 10, but notice we put 0 to 10, and the next one goes 11 to 12, but notice we put 10 to 12, is because this first number is actually like the space before the character you're trying to capture. So that space is technically the 10th space. So we're really saying capture the characters between the 10th space between the characters and the 12th space between the characters, which is 11 and 12. Anyways. If you don't want to understand that conceptually, you can at least just memorize. <laughs> Take the first number and subtract it by one, and you're good to go. Okay. So we got this all loaded up. Um, these are the five variables we're working with. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to make sure we only have the kids that are going to, that are in K through 12. So let's actually start this way. So I'm going to do a little counter. I equals zero. Okay. And for the counter, um, i equals i plus 1. Every time we go through the lines, it's going to just add up. It's just going to increase the counter by 1. So at the end, the counter, at least right here, where I haven't done anything, um, the counter should just be this number, right? Because that's how many lines are in the file. So let's run the script school type by income, and then I'm putting in this file, okay? And it's going to run through each line, and every time it's running through a line, it's incrementing this variable. It's just adding one to the i, and look at it. There it is, okay? So that's all the, that's all the records. That's all the people, the whole sample, okay? But I don't want the whole sample, right? I First, and, first things first, I only want kids who are in grades K through 12. So let's go back to our da data dictionary here. And remember, grades K through 12 are these. So we want people who the variable here for what grade they're in says 2, 3, 4, or 5. That's the number that we want at that part of that line. Remember, we cut that line right here. The 13th character in each line represents the school they're in. And that 13th character in each line is going to either say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. We only want the, want the ones that say 2, 3, 4, and 5. We don't want any of the rest of these people, OK? So I'm going to say if the grade is less than 2 or the grade is greater than 5, then continue. And continue just means go up, go, go to the next line. Don't go anymore on this line. Go to the next line and start again, OK? So if we make that change, let's go back to our, let's run the script again. 
if every time we find someone whose grades are not in K through 12, either they're not in school or they're above or below that grade or whatever, we just skip them, then that means that they're not going to get counted here. So this should no longer be as big as it once was. So we'll put that in here just to kind of check, play around, you know, um, and see how many, how many records do we have left when we're canceling out all these kids who are not in K through 12, not just kids, adults as well. All right, here's how many records we have left, 481,131. That's how many kids are in the sample who are in K through 12, okay? Now, the other thing we can do here is instead of just adding one, which will tell us how many kids are in the sample, we can add their weight, right? Which tells us how, how many kids they represent in the whole population. So this should give us the total population of kids who are in K through 12, right? Or at least, you know, the best estimate we can get from this file. So what does that look like when we run that, right? I'm using the weight. Instead of just adding one, I'm using the weight of that kid. Okay. So what do we get here? We get, um, that's 200. Then 46, we get uh, 5.3 billion <laughs> is the number we get, right? That's um, obviously incorrect. So what's going on with all that? Um, let's, let's show you here. Okay. Uh, all right. So weight. What is person weight? Let's get a description, right? So this is a good thing. This is a good, I don't know, like little tip, like to play around with this stuff, right? Because it looks like there's, if you add up all the weight of the kids who are K through 12, it looks like it says 5.3 billion. That can't possibly be true. We don't have even 5.3 billion people in the U.S. So what's going on here? <clears throat> and they have it explained here. Person weight is a six-digit numeric variable which indicates how many persons in the U.S. population are represented by a given person in an IPUMS, IPUMS sample and has in the bold here, two implied decimals, two implied decimals. So for example, if the weight shows up like this, then it's, which, you know, would be, you would scan it as 10,461. It's really 104.61, right? So what we want to do then is just divide by 100, right? Because that's two implied decimals. So divide by 100 and you'll actually get those decimals cleared out. And when we do that, what do we get? We get 53 million kids who are in K through 12. That's very much what you should expect. That's how many kids are in K through 12, roughly. This is 2019. So, all right, so we're doing good. So we see how that works. Now there's another thing I wanna do here is let's look at school type again, because let's look at this variable for school type. Where do we do in here? And let's go back into the, is this it? Yeah, okay. So school type, look, you have a number of options down here for school type. Um, and should I increase the size here? Yes. We only really want kids with one of these two. Now, I think that this might be the only p values that are left in the file once we only include K through 12 because... It looks like none of these are in the file at all because these were for all other samples, not the 2019 ACS. And if they're not enrolled, they shouldn't be in K through 12 here. So let's just see what happens uh, when we also make sure that the school type is either public or private. So if school type is not equal to 2 and school type is not equal to three. So the two is the public and the three is the private. If we're saying, look, if, if this variable doesn't have a two or a three in it, then let's just skip the line, okay? Let's run this again to see, does that, how many people does that eliminate from, from this sample? It doesn't eliminate any. So my intuition was right, that the only people who are surviving <laughs> after we restrict the sample to just these people are people who are 
going to get one of these two variables. So this is this exclusion here is not actually necessary. Um, so I'll just take it out. All right. So <clears throat> we've got the kids we want isolated here. These 53 million kids, which is actually just 481,000 records in the sample. We got those kids isolated. Now we want to be able to assign them an income, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do per capita income. Let me just say PC income. And this is a very simple income equivalization method. So what I'll do is I'll take the family income and I'll divide it by the family size, right? So if if it's $100,000 and you live in a two-person family, then it'll show up as $50,000. If it's $100,000 and you live in a four-person family, then it'll show up as $25,000, right? So it's, it's how much money your family has per person in the family, which is a good indicator of like, what are your real resources, right? Because like a family that has two parents and one kid, you know, uh, is very different than a family that has two parents and like seven kids, very different. So... This allows us to adjust for that and kind of get a sense of means, which is important because we're talking about, in a way, like, are people who have the money, are they going to private school? And to what extent are they doing it? So we want to do this, okay? Now, the next part of this is a little tricky, and I think it's going to be hard for people to understand, in part because I'm basically just uh, doing this to plug into my custom <laughs> Python library that I wrote. But I'm going to create uh, something called a tuple, um, and basically for each, each record, I'm going to put their weight, then I'm going to put their family income, and then I'm going to put their school type, right? So each person, I create a little, what's called a tuple, this little bracket that has those three values in it. And then I'm going to add that person to my array or my list here kids.append. So by the end of all this, we'll have a list of all of these kids, 481,131 of them in the file. And for each one of those kids, we'll have their weight, we'll have their per capita income defined this way, and we'll have their school type. And the reason why I want to create a list that has all this information for each kid, like easily accessible, is because what I'm going to do with this list is I'm going to sort it from richest to poorest, or rather from poorest to richest using this variable. So I'm going to take each one of these uh, kids, I'm going to line them up from l the people who have the lowest PC income to the people who have the highest PC income. And when I sort the list, I also want their weight and their school type to go with them. Because then once I've got them all lined up from zero to a hundred from, 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 the poorest kid to the richest kid, then I can look at their school types and then I can get this nice distribution and say, oh, so for the poorest 1% of kids, which, you know, how many of them go to public school versus private school and then for the, and so on and so forth, right? So that's why I do this, okay? And I'm all setting up for this thing I'm going to do at the end. <laughs> um, for, uh, here, let's delete this. We don't need this anymore. For i in range 0 to 100, okay? And the way this is going to work is every time we go through this loop, this variable i, so remember for this one, we have a for loop as well. And so what we do is every time we go through the loop, it goes through this data list, and the data list has an entry item for each line of the file. So remember from here, head in 5... This is just going to show the top, the first five lines of the file, okay? It the the data list just has list item zero, list item one, list item two, list item three, and so each time this variable line is just being given this value, and then this value, and then this value, and then this value. This time we have a variable i, and it's just going to go through these numbers. So the first time through the loop, i is going to be set equal to zero. Then the next time through the loop, i is going to be set equal to 1, and then equal to 2, and then equal to 3, and then equal to 4, all the way to 100, okay? And the reason I do that is because I'm going to create another little tuple here, which is i and i plus 1, okay? 
So the very first time we go through this list, the variable will say 0 and 1. And then the next time will be 1 and 2. And then 2 and 3. And that's because those are the two percentiles that I'm going to like group, that I'm going to find all the records in between those two percentiles. And that's how I'm going to get this nice, lovely graph where I can kind of say, all right, between the zero and the one percentile, between those two percentiles, from the zero and one percentile, what percent of kids are in private school and what percent of kids are in public school? Then I'll go to the next one. Between the first and second percentile, what percent of those kids are in public school and what percent of those kids are in private school? And we're going to do that all the way up until we get to the end. And then we're saying for the kids between the 99th percentile and the 100th percentile, how many of them are, you know, in public and private, okay? So you can see what this looks like. This is what Toop will say each time we run through the file here, okay? This will take a second because it's going to run through this. All right, you can't see my finger. It'll run through this first. Okay, so you see, that's the whole point of that list of that little for loop there is just to make it so that each time it runs through, we get this nice little lovely tuple. And we're going to use that here, okay? So what we're going to find here is I'm going to say publics equals, and now we're going to use my, my personal library. <laughs> I'll show you what that looks like, though I'm not sure how well I'll be able to explain it to you. I wrote this uh, little function called wshareComp, um, and it's the weighted share composition. Anyways, um, what it lets us do here is I put the, the data that we're using, which is kids. That's the a list that I'm going to use. Then we're going to put the tuple that I'm focused on. Remember these. And then we're going to put the category, the, the number that we're we're trying to isolate. Now for publics, the number is two. So we're trying to get school type two. So basically we're saying for the first go round, the first time we go through it, we're saying, okay, I want you to look at all the kids between zero, the zero percentile and the one percentile. Okay. I want you to look through all the kids in those percentiles. We did, this is based on their income, right? So the poorest 1% of kids. Go through the poorest 1% of kids, and I want you to tell me what percent of them go to school type number two, which is public. That's what we're doing. And then, of course, we do the same thing for privates. The only difference being that we want to be told how many are going to school type three, right? Now, what is this function that I'm calling here? I think it's at the end here. <laughs> this is uh, quite a complicated uh, little bit of uh, Python here. It's really not that complicated, but I wrote this uh, little library, if that's what you want to call it. It's really just a collection of functions that do a lot of just like the weighted distributional stuff that you see me publish a lot because I just do this stuff a lot. So it's just super easy, as you can see. Instead of typing all this out <laughs> when I'm writing it, I can just type this out. And like I said, I already told you what it does. So the first thing we do is we sort all the kids from poorest to riches. Then we go into each like percentile, you know, the bottom 1% based on income. And we say, what percent of those kids have school type 2? And what percent of those kids have school type 3? And we, we just do this for every single one of these things, right? So that at the end of it, we can just see what that looks like, okay? So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to print the results. Toop, publics, privates. See what this looks like. Here, I should probably move my guy over. Whoops. <laughs> All right, here we go. 93%, this is the publics. So 91% of kids are in public schools between the 14th and 15th percentile. 92, 93, 92, 90, 91, right? Every little 1% little chunk, we're getting it. Now we're at 90%, 92%. It's going down. 90%, 88, 91, 88, 90, 91, 90, 90, 90, 89, 89. 
We just passed the median. This is the median here, 90%. At the median, 90% of kids are going to the, uh, the publics. We're still moving. 90 is holding strong. We're still, whoa, we're up to the 75th percentile. We're still at 88% are going to the public schools. We're about to hit the 90th percentile. We're about to get up to the top 10, right at the 90th percentile. We still got 85% going to public schools. 95th percentile is 78% going to public schools. That's still 80%, roughly. And then we keep going. Between the 96th and 97th percentile, those kids, 75% going to public school. Between 97th and 98th percentile, 70% going to public school. 98th and 99th percentile, we get 64%. So now we're getting, you know, that's a that's a significant. Now it's only two-thirds. Um, and then we get up to the top 1%, and it's, it's 83%. So that's a little bit weird at the end. You know, we get this little drop and then kick back up. I don't know what you want to make of that, but um, but yeah. So that there you go. There's your finding, um, and as you can see, it's not the case that most rich kids are going to private school. That is simply not the case. It is the case that it's less, right? So at the bottom here, right at the poorest groups here, you know, it's ninety-three to ninety-four percent. Notice some of them are still going to private schools. You know. Maybe they're getting scholarships. Maybe they're getting help from other people to pay for it. Maybe the incomes are, you know, I don't know. But 94% here at the bottom are going to public schools. And when we get to the, when we get to the top, the richest, it's closer, I would guess, to say maybe 70%, let's say, 75%. This one kind of throws us for a loop because it goes to 64 and then shoots up to 83 but we go from about 95% of kids at the poorest end going to public schools to still two-thirds of kids to still, you know, 70, 75%, whatever, at the top end. Most of rich kids, most of them, even at the tippy top, right? Even at the tippy top, this is the top 5%, 6%, even at the tippy top, most of them are going to public school. By a large, the vast majority are going to public school, Right? Here at the 90th percentile, it's 85%. So these are people who are right in the top 10%. They're right there. And only the only 15% of them are sending their kids to private schools. Right? The other thing to note here, as, and I point this out, is that, look, these nines, like the private school attending rate, you know, we see it up and down the ladder. It's not like, oh, all the poor kids go to public schools and then maybe a smattering of middle class kids and then and then it's just all the rich that's not going on at all right it goes from six percent to you know tw you know like it's up and down the ladder okay so what i would normally do and i'll show you this as well is i will i want to graph this right let's get a nice little lovely graph um we'll start it at zero and i want to graph what this looks like so we can get a beautiful visualization right you don't want to just look at numbers in a terminal. Um, so let me get my percentiles lined up here. Okay, I think I should move my head, right? Well, we'll see what this looks like afterwards. I think my head's in the right place now. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, uh, let's say we'll, we'll just put it public here. Whoops, I'm gonna change the output of this so it's just publics because that'll make it easy to just copy and paste privates is just going to be one minus publics um so or 100 minus publics now one of the tricky things here is uh oh, we'll get away is when i'm graphing it we want to say there's like a hundred percentiles but there's really only 99 there, there's a hundred numbers that are going to get shot out of here, but for graphical purposes, I want to do zero to 100, but zero to 100 is actually 101 values. So I only get a hundred values, but to make the graph work the way I want it to work, I need 101 values. Um, and that's just kind of a quirk of the way the graph works. So what I'll probably do is the first value, I'll put it for both the number one, like the first percentile, and for the zero percentile. 
And the reason that you know I have to do this is I'm not really cutting the percentile, right? I'm cutting the stuff between the percentiles, right? Between the zero and one percentile and between the one and two percentile. That's how I'm able to get these like beautiful averages. Because if you just cut a percentile, you're, you're not able, you know, the person who's right on the 80th percentile is not, it may be in public school or private school because that's just one individual, right? So anyways, oh, I said I was going to do, so... I'll just put this one twice, okay? And then we'll do private. And private is just 100 minus, right? There we go. And let's go ahead and make this not so uh, ugly. Um, all right. So we do that, and then I'll just graph. Let's get a graph here. What I want is an area chart. I want a stacked area chart. There it is. All right. So we'll say uh, percent of kids attending public or private school K through 12, 2019. We'll call it that. I like to bump up the size a little bit. Let's get a little, let's get a little action going here. All right, well, you know, it's just kind of like cleaning it all up here. Let's see, we want this to be a little bigger. I want this to be a little bigger. Um, this to be a little bigger. We'll say, oh, I need to buy income percentile. Yeah? And we'll say, Income percentile. There we go. And I wanna, I wanna make the uh, this stuff look good. So uh, what are we gonna do here? Line thickness. I want actually a zero line. Ooh, and there you go. See now the line's just gone. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna put as the red. For public, I'm gonna put black. Is that good? Yes, okay. And let's bump up the color a little bit. Oh. There we go. Actually, we can apply that to all series, right? There we go. That's what the graph looks like. Where's the where's the rich in the private schools? I don't see them here. I can make this a little nicer. Uh, so 10, and then we can do the same for here. 10. Oops. All right, because they did it to percentile, so we got to do it. There we go. All right. Now, at this point, you can make some adjustments to this if you want to make it you know, I mean, it it looks pretty smooth. It's not too bad. Like one thing you might do is you might say this is a little weird, and maybe we should smooth this out. But I'm fine just saying, yeah, no, this is what the data looks like. Um, it's public. It's all the rich people are going to public schools. Okay. And one reason I think people don't understand this is because they have a real misunderstanding of what private schools look like in the United States, right? So they imagine these elite private schools, right? They imagine like I think what is in New York City, there's the Dalton School, which is where Jeffrey Epstein taught. And <laughs> that's sort of a little bit of trivia. Uh, you know, Matt Iglesias went there. He talks about that from time to time. They think about, you know, Sidwell Friends in Washington, D.C. They think about these elite non-sectarian schools that are just giving, you know, the best the, you know, you pay $40,000 to just get the best education you could possibly get. They get the smartest teachers there. They have their small classes and all that kind of stuff. And that's just not really what private school is primarily about in the United States. So here is some data from the National Center for Education Statistics that I think really should uh, get your head on straight, okay? So in fall of 2015... 10% of all elementary and secondary students were enrolled in private school. Only 
right? And that's consistent with what we find here, right? For the most part, it's 10%, some's over 10%, some's below 10%, but it's, it's right around 10%, okay? But what are those, what do those schools look like for those 10%, right? So of those 10%, 36% were enrolled in Catholic schools. So a third of that is just Catholic schools. Another 13% were enrolled in conservative Christian schools. 10% were enrolled in affiliated religious schools. 16% were enrolled in unaffiliated religious schools. And only 24% were enrolled in non-sectarian schools. So three-fourths of these private school kids are enrolled in a religious institution. And now I know some religious institutions are maybe only nominally religious, and that's still, you know, I get all that, that this is maybe not a perfect representation. But roughly speaking, let's say two-thirds to three-fourths of kids who are enrolled in private school are enrolled in religious schools. These are not necessarily elite schools. In fact, their educational quality, not necessarily that great, right? But the parents like them because they're teaching, you know, religious things. That's what the, kid, the parents are wanting to get out of them. Only one-fourth of these kids are enrolled in these in non-sectarian schools, which is where you're going to find these sort of like elite secular schools that people have in their mind. So that's about... 2.5, 2.6% of all kids. That's it. 25 2.6% of all kids. Everyone else is either in a public school, which is 90% of kids, or they're in this little slice of religious education. That's what we're really talking about. There's not this like just mass chunk of private school students sitting at the top of the distribution. That doesn't exist. And I wanted to finish this video with one other stat that we have here at uh, the upshot. Here, let me hide my face. Um, some colleges have more students from the top 1% than the bottom 60% fine yours. This is a 2007 um, piece from the New York Times. And this is about college. And I, when I saw this, I was kind of interested in this as well because college is a whole other game. With college, we think a lot about private schools. Oh, there's a lot of private schools, um, you know, that name brand private schools, you know, blah, blah, blah. So where do the rich kids go to college? And in fact, this shows up in the discourse around free college, right? Because oftentimes you'll see this little tit for tat that goes, we should have uh, free tuition at public schools. Weirdly, no one ever says free tuition at private schools, but whatever, right? We should have free tuition at public schools. And then people go, ah, we shouldn't give free tuition to rich kids. And then all frequently on the left, one of the reactions, instead of saying, oh, no, like the universalist ethos, and, you know, you could make that move. Instead of doing that, they go, rich kids aren't don't go to the public schools, right? Which I always, you know, I don't know why they say that, because they do. <laughs> Here's the top one. These are the kids from the richest 1% of families. This is using administrative data. It's one of those Chetty studies. So this is like pretty impressive. And this is college. And this is a sector which is very different in terms of public, private, all that kind of stuff. Even there, you know, basically about half of these kids in the t richest 1% are going to public schools. So... You know, the public schools are everywhere. They're in the colleges. They're in the K through 12. It's not like, the, the, you know, in the discourse, people almost act as if, oh, well, that's, that's for the commoners. The commoners go to the public schools, whereas the rich people, they go uh, to private schools their whole life, including a private university. It's just not the case, right? I mean, we're seeing where roughly half of these kids, you know, if you're a rich kid with a top 1% income growing up in, you know, Texas, you're going to go to the University of Texas, probably. That's like the most likely outcome for you. If you're growing up in, or even Texas A&M, which is a public school. If you're growing up in Michigan, you're going to go to the University of Michigan. You're going to, growing up in Ohio, you're going to go to the Ohio State University. If you're growing up in California, you're going to try to go to a USC. Some of these kids go to the private schools, don't get me wrong, it's 50-50 here. But even like the richest 1%, in a sector where private public is much, you know, different in the way we think about it, you have to pay fees and all that kind of stuff, even for the public schools, there's, the public schools are still there and they're still dominating, right? Um, in fact, more 
kids from the top 1% go to public schools than kids from the bottom 20% because, of course, a large chunk of the bottom 20% don't attend college at all. So... I don't know. I, I feel you know to get to go back to the initial starting point of this about public production. Um, what annoys me here is this idea that these that the you know that these public schools are just they're almost these like charity schools. They, they no, these are engines, workhouses of our education system for everyone, rich and poor. They're not. Also, Rands, oh, yeah, they're not that great, but it's what we have. Uh, it, no. Almost everyone goes to public school in K-12. through Even the rich, the vast majority of the rich are going to public school. And then even when we get into college, it's still a lot of, you know, like these are legitimate, credible institutions that put out really smart, intelligent people, right? These are the people who run the, the country, you know, and it's it's not just this sort of separate track of private education where, where all the real education is, where all the real, you know, and then, then the public. It, that's not it at all. The publics are toe-to-toe with the privates, and, and they, they dominate in these, uh, in these areas. Um, so, yeah, you know, take of that what you will, but... Uh, the general consensus on this is just is just not the case. Public schools just as good as private schools, and most kids go to public school. The vast majority, including the rich.